The iron ships from here. The Templar running things is Rupert Ferris and our target one. Target two is Sir David Brewster, who's got his hands on a bauble that could ruin us in this wretched war. Think you both can handle it? What a question. All right. My mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, the unstoppable Fry twins. See them nightly at Covent Garden. George, honestly, I've studied the plans of the laboratory and have every route covered. And I've got all I need right here. I'll extend your regards to Ferris. Chat later, George, we've a train to catch. Jacob! Evie! May the creed guide you, you vagrants! Poor man, more afraid than ever. The years have not been kind. Evie Fry, where did you get it from? The same place as you, Jacob. Send me some laudanum for my head. Coming right up. Ferris, I'm coming. Mr. Ferris, sir, the, uh, the lad in the factory should be taken to be bandaged by the apothecary. Fine, but dock his wages. Yes, sir. Shall we arrive at a final price, Mr. Ferris? It is done. Oh? What did you accomplish, boy? A vault loosened in Starrick's machine. A large vault, but not enough. Your Grandmaster will fall. You assassins can circle London to your heart's content. The mechanism we have built has been going strong for a hundred years, and will run a thousand more. It is the very city itself. We will take London from your hands. From Croydon? You lurk in the shadows like a coward. I doubt it. We seem to have made an unscheduled stop.
me next time I'll walk. Yard. Guard quarters. Brewster's laboratory. This is where the piece of Eden will be located. No loose ends. Now, did a couple the locomotive and create a diversion. Well, where is it? Huh? Where's Brewster's supplies? Meter. Me down the tracks. You stay here. I'll keep a lookout. All right. I'll shout if I get any bother. I need two more weeks with the device. Your questionable practices are beginning to draw unwanted attention. You have been given more than enough time to achieve results, Sir David. I was unaware that you expected me to perform like a cocker spaniel. Permit me to remind you of your obligation to the order, Miss Thorne. You ride me like a racehorse. Sir David, I will return tomorrow. If you have not unlocked the device's secrets, forget your dogs and horses. I will leave you to the wolves. Good day. I was merely promised a tour of the premises, my lords. Who sent you? It's one of green spies. Get that man to interrogation. Then I want him brought to the lab. What a pity, but no deviations from the mission. Ah, thank you kindly. I was in ever such a squeaky fix when, what do you know? You rescue me. Where's the hidden laboratory? Untie me and then we can parlay, my lady. I'm pressed for time. Tell me now. It's underground. Requires a key. One of the guards nicked mine, cheeky sod. Thank you. Uh, now, untie me? You got yourself in? I trust you can get yourself out again. Not to worry, my lady. Can still recall a couple of tricks from me carnival days. Charming. Piece of Eden. Increase the electricity. But it'll become unstable, sir. You heard what Miss Thorne said. We need results now. It is time to lay down your head, Sir David Brewster. But I have so much more to discover. Do not be afraid. I'm not. God will protect me. I will continue your experiment. You will not stop, Staric. Miss Thorne has already found another piece of Eden, more powerful than the last. I will take that one too. Will we fight to gain what we cannot take with us? It's in our nature. That explosion. What explosion? EV. Piece of Eden detonated and took the lab with it. The magic lump of hyperbolic metal. I'm shocked. Simply because you have never valued the pieces does not All mean... went according to plan. Hmm? <clears throat> there was a slight complication. How slight? The lab exploded. Jacob. You derailed a train. Oh, he did. Did he? Well, the train derailed and I happened to be on it. I killed my target. Brewster is also no more. Then all in all, a successful mission in spite of you two. What about London? What about it? We're wasting our time out here. 
You know as well as I do that London has been the domain of the Templars for the last hundred years. They are far too strong yet. Patience. But the Templars have found a new piece of Eden. Sir David is dead. They do not know how to use it. The Council shall guide us. Sound advice that your father would have seconded. I shall see you back in Crawley. Patience, Evie. Ah, oh, the gentle sound of opportunity passing us by. So what's stopping us? London is waiting to be liberated. Forget Crawley. Father would have wanted us to listen. Oh, Father, you could continue his legacy in London. Freeing future generations from a city ruled by Templars. You know, Jacob Fry, you might just be right. Then shall we? Yes. Let's. Onward to London. <laughs> Dr. Grammatica. Come on. Who is Isabel? What a lovely surprise. Our mutual friends will be here shortly to search for the artifact. Once it's located, I'll let you know. Super. Always a pleasure. Prick. It's people like you that give historians a bad name. I'm afraid I don't have time for you today, Mr. Hastings. Thank you for making my job easy. Oh, shit. It does look grim. Masterberg, Agent Acosta. Deal with them, please. Move it! Hunt them down! I've never seen so many people all at once. <laughs> Churning seas of London. It's just the way Father described. Now, to find Henry Green and formulate a plan of attack against the Templars. Who's Mr. Green again? The assassin watching over London. Did you not listen the first three times? Listen to what? <laughs> <gasps> Oi, watch it. Ben pardon, sir. Oi! Come back here, you filthy Joker, dipper! Stop. Where is Mr. Green's shop located? It was marked on Father's map. Two assassins, equal in height, one female, one male, two decades old, and those devilish smiles. You must be the Fry Twins. And you are? Henry Green, at your service. I was sorry to learn about your father's passing. Thank you. What can you tell us about Crawford Starrick? I suppose the Council desires news. London must be freed, to provide a better future for all of its citizens. Well, thank goodness the Council saw reason and sent you to aid us. Yes. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news. Today, Staric sits at the helm of the most sophisticated Templar infrastructure known in the Western world. Every class, every borough, the gangs, the industries... His reach extends all across London. I've always thought of myself as a gang leader. Firm. But fear. Huh. Well, I have uniforms. And I'll unite a mix of disenfranchised outsiders under one name. That's it, Evie. We can rally them to our side. Oh, like the way that you rallied those car players at the Oakbrook Tavern into the river. Oh, that was different. They beat me at whist. I can see it now. We'll call ourselves the Rooks. 
You're never good at chess either. Have you got a better plan? Find the piece of Eden. Oh, well, let me show you the lay of the land. Shall we? Look at what Starak has done to the city. Whitechapel is riddled with crime. Child labor, despite regulations. A gang known as the Blighters overruns the streets. And Templars manipulating behind the scenes. As in all the other boroughs, we need to return this city to the people who built it in the first place. We will free London from Starak. You have my word. I my looks. Miss Fry, your passion is inspiring. Come. Let us return to my shop, and I can bring you up to date on the rest. <clears throat> Confound this city! No one looks where they're going! Yes, I've noticed that. Bloody drood! I'll never finish it at this rate. Only Providence knows where those words are headed now. Well, I must get to work replacing them. Should you ever be in the mood for a tale or two, you can always find me where the ale is warm and tempers are hot. Ta-ta! What an odd man. That Mr. Fry was Charles Dickens. Knows everyone and everything in the city. If I were you, I would keep that connection in your back pocket. <clears throat> Kaylock's gang is nearby. They must not follow me back to my shop. We'll take care of it. Here. You might be able to use this. Oh, God, I hope so. My carriage is nearby. Make use of it to tow them off my trail. I will meet you at the curio shop. Did you give them the slip? We gave them more than that. <laughs> Who are all these people? Over the years, I have established a number of connections across the city. Splendid. We'll need focused aid. Focused aid? <laughs> we take over Starek's gangs. We cripple his control. You're not aiming high enough. Starek has influence in every branch of society. We need to match him. I see what you're saying, Evie. We need the Rooks. You are not starting a gang called the Rooks. I believe I may have an idea of my own. We will need the police to turn a blind eye to activities. My ally in the force, Sergeant Abilene. I've heard he's a master of disguise. Next up, urchins. 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 Children make for excellent spies. Clara O'Day. Smart as a whip, that one. Finally, you would be wise to remember that Starrick never acts alone. There are gang leaders in every borough. You'll meet them soon enough, no doubt. Rexford Gaylock, known for his ability to vanish before your very eyes. Should we make him vanish for real? I suppose. One moment. Um, a Templar target you might want to look into. Uh, be cautious. It's rough out there. No, don't worry about me, Greeny. I can handle a few thugs. Oh, blast them. Alec, whatever is the matter? I have been intercepting nothing but poppycock propaganda about soothing syrup and whatnot. No, I swear to high heavens, if Starrick's monopoly continues... Alec, I beg your pardon. These are friends of mine. Evie Fry and her brother, Jacob. Oh, um... Alexander Graham Bell. Linguist, inventor, and technical expert. Alec, I have something of a favor to ask you. Can you fix this? Oh, it looks like the casing is cracked. Oh, comes apart. <laughs> I see. Could have used one of these to fit my fuses on top of Big Ben. Alec is installing a new telegraph line for our Free Press Association. To combat the Static Telegraph Company. Now, if I can mend the fuses connecting independent lines from Big Ben, Starrick will be weakened. Only, we are somewhat at a handicap. And... there. Oh, I've removed the mechanism, so it may work with your bracer. I'll put it to use immediately. <laughs> Jacob, wait. Mr. Bell, allow me to help you with your fuses. Oh, you will not find me too proud to accept Miss Fry. Oh, uh, we can use my carriage if you'd be so good as to hold the reins, though. I'll take that. Um, I, I can help you. Thank you very much, Miss Fry. 
I will now be able to continue with the installation of the new line. If there's anything else I can do to help... But certainly. Please do come and visit. Oh, uh, I was toying with this device and have noted down the formula for you. It's not perfect yet, but by golly, it works. Miss Fry, uh, I was just showing Jacob the first message was received via the mended lines. Oh, uh, you can keep the rope launcher, by the way. Um, we've managed to procure another one for your brother. Excellent work. Thank you again. You're very welcome, Mr. Bell. We can now defend the principle of impartial news and free speech. Free is fair, but free and brief is far better. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Fry, such caustic wit. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we must depart. <laughs> oh, uh, good fortune to you both. Uh, call on me at any time. Dead stag soothing syrup right here. It's all he drinks. Your syrup is liquefying him. He's turning him simple headed. Now, look now. You are scaring away my customers. Why don't you bugger off or I'll give you something to remember me by? Oh, you can't talk to me like that, you little. Gatling. What's all this then? Oh, sod off! If you'll excuse me, madam. Keep a sharp eye out, lads. Someone's targeting our network. The distillery might be next. You should not go about frightening respectable gentlemen, young man. I didn't realize snooping around was considered gentlemanly. Snooping? Sir, I assure you, keep vigilant. Quick, inside. That was too close a call. Well done, dear boy. Well done. Charles Darwin, delighted to make your acquaintance. Jacob Fry, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> While you were busy wreaking havoc, I found this. It indicates that a sample of every batch has been sent to Lambeth Asylum. Ooh, I wonder if it's visiting hours. Don't be so hasty, Mr. Fry. Many people work at Lambeth. You wouldn't want to attract unwanted attention. Mm. And what's the fun in that? Not every problem can be solved by blowing things sky high. Sometimes a little discretion is in order. It's getting late. I will meet you at the asylum to continue our investigation. I have told you before, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I say. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> drive, damn you, drive. <laughs> that is Richard Owen, a vile, despicable wretch of a man. Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Ah, Jacob, uh, Miss uh, Fry, how good to see you. Oh, have you seen Stalick's latest lies? Lies in a newspaper? What transpired from the new line you're establishing? Oh, the cables we ordered never arrived. And then we intercepted this. A message mentioning cargo seized at College Wharf. Then let's unseize it. Oh, uh, wait. Another intercepted wire contained the recipe for a powerful hallucinogenic serum. I've adapted this dart mechanism to work with your bracers. Alec, you're a genius. Well, that patently is untrue. Although I've also discovered that the serum adopts a form of a gas when subjected to heat. Just when I think you can't surpass yourself. <laughs> oh, careful there, Mr. Bell. 
Every worthwhile endeavour is fraught with dangers, my dear friends. None more so than yours. But you have triumphed once again. How do you know? We have entered the age of communication, remember? We've already received word from Greenwich that the shipment has arrived safely, thanks to you. Have you discovered what else is in that shipment? Indeed. Um, I'm afraid that Starrick's poison has found its way onto the open market. If he believes that will stop us, he is mistaken. Mr. Fry, I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes, we had a most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson, I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me. Ah. Well, as you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Elitzen. I don't care about your ethics, and I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. Here it is, Doctor. We will continue our experiment shortly. In a moment, we will compare the brains of our two specimens. And since both specimens had a propensity towards violent behavior, we should see similar protrusions in specific parts of their brains. It ends. Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow. Forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. <laughs> you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford Sterrick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. Oh, you're a child. A child who believes it can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing? An 
another exciting night home for Evie Fry. Just on my way out, actually. I found the piece of Eden. What's this one going to do, hmm? Heal the sick? Deflect bullets? Control the populace? They're dangerous objects, Jacob, especially in Templar hands. Oh, you sound exactly like father. If only. Lucy Thorne is expecting a shipment tonight. She's Starrick's expert in the occult. I'm nearly certain she is receiving the piece of Eden Sir David Brewster mentioned. Sounds like fun. Mind if I join you? Promise you will stick to the mission. I swear. The contents of that box are worth more than your life and those of your entire family. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Thorne. Uh, careful there! I double the guard on that cart! Now, Miss Thorne, there's the matter of some uh, papers for Mr. Starrick. If you'll just come this way. Very well, but make it quick. Whatever it is she's after, it's in that chest. There are gunmen on the rooftops. Can you dispose of them before I reach the cart? I was hoping for a challenge. I have not found a piece of Eden, but this material is invaluable. Look. It says the London assassins had found a shroud. The shroud of Eden is supposed to heal even the gravest injury. If the assassins had found something like this, surely father would have known. There must be something we're missing. Something only we can see. These look like directions. Are you coming? Field work is not really my speciality. We found a clue to a precursor object. Don't you want to follow it? Put that way, one can hardly refuse. I think this is it. I think you're right. Look. I'll be in the study. I don't want to be interrupted unless you have news of the lost notebook. That makes getting in a challenge. You still intend to enter? If this is a Templar stronghold, it won't get any easier. But don't worry. We'll stay well away from Miss Lucy. Shall we? What are we looking for? I'm not quite sure. Enormously subtle, is it? Clearly, Kenway had a strong sense of spectacle. The history of the London Assassins. Vault holes, vaults. A hidden key. This is it. You say you heard music. There was no opening there before. It's closing! Yes, I can see that. Help me block it. We need to find another way out. Miss Attaway. Yes, may I? Oh. Splendid. You're here to murder me. I what? No matter. Everyone has a prize. Is this enough? I'm not here to kill you. And what's your game? Mr. Starrick and the Milner Company have blocked your ambitions long enough. I have a business proposition for you. Wonderful. 
Come with me. We have much to discuss, Mr. Jacob Fry. At your service. Truer words were never spoken. Malcolm Milner. Starek's puppet himself. Careful, you twats! This park scene needs to make it to the outway depot. He thinks he can burn my buses. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Let's give him the whole damn bottle. <laughs> we'll turn Milner's park scene against him. But I'll need help from my gang. Such entrepreneurial instinct, Mr. Fry. I shall leave you to it. How's that for a taste? I can see Milner's stock price plummeting already. You're hired. Oh, I have more business planned for us both. Drop a note to my secretary to make an appointment, and I shall reveal the next step in our scheme. I don't actually work. Like that. Mr. Fry, I told you to make an appointment. My schedule was open. You're fortunate I like you. <laughs> Internal combustion engines. Eight small syllables that mean a great deal of money. The engines will be delivered to Milner by train. Secure them for me, and he will be devastated. Mm. I need a second train to pull this off. And I think I know just the man. So we have a deal, Mr. Fry? You're fortunate I like you, Miss Attaway. <laughs> so what do you want, Fry? What makes you so sure I want something? Perhaps I saved you out of the kindness of my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let me tell you about the job. Miller's pulling a lot of cargo there. Just be sure to make the transfer. Give him hell. <sighs> the internal combustion engine. The end of horse-drawn transport. <laughs> it's like gazing into the future. And what is the going rate for the future, do you think? Uh, we're not selling them. You're giving them to your contact? You'll be paid all the same. Who is this Pearl, anyway? How long have you been working with her? She's a business partner. That's all you need to know. Jacob, darling, do join me. To our fruitful partnership. And to the shiny new engines now in my possession. Back to business. Milne has fled to the Thames, occupied with securing his ferry. It's all he has left. Hmm, protecting it with his life, no doubt. The very thing I want you to take. <laughs> Just kill him. That's not your first glass of champagne, is it? Success is more intoxicating than alcohol, Mr. Fry. Then save a glass for me. Ugh. I knew this day would come. Mr. Starrett was furious I lost the engines. So this is my comeuppance. Pearl Attaway led me to you, not Starrick. Then they were gonna gather again. I should never have come between Mr. Starrick and Miss Attaway. Family always stay together in the end. What do you mean, their family? You glower too much, cousin. You will get your engines back. Our new motorized buses will bring us both a lot of money. I'll need to arrange proper transport for the engines to get back to my factory. I want you at Waterloo 
personally to ensure that nothing goes wrong. Of course. May the Father of Understanding guide us. Today and in all of our future endeavors, cousin. Waterloo Station. Ah! Oh, Jacob, Evie, it's you. Thank goodness. Experimenting, are we, Alec? Correct. And looking a bit frazzled. Nerves. It's those great oafs Starrett keeps sending around to coax me. He is offering a ridiculous amount of money. Alec, you're not thinking of jumping ship, are you? Never. I've been working in something in case they get too insistent. Uh, it's meant to stun an assailant, should they need a rise. Are you certain that it works? Uh, not as such. I I've made three of them with varying degrees of acidity and whatnot. But one must be the right formula. Let's find some Staric lackeys to target then, shall we? <laughs> Speaking of Staric, he is still transmitting false information. We could simply destroy his transmitters. His company's too well guarded. And the bombs will help, but it would be awkward to produce bombs that potentially do not stun. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like opportunity has come knocking. Oh dear, they never looked so angry before. Stand clear, Alec. Let us instead play a little linguistic game with them. Um, take the bombs and climb onto the roof. Uh, when I see the name of uh, a fruit, Toss one near the thugs. Right then. Oh, uh, oh wait, uh, I nearly forgot. Um, slip these into your boots and you will henceforth be immune to all voltaic discharge. I think. My dears, Jacob TV. Thanks are once again in order for supporting what is most dear to me and to our cause, freedom of speech. It's a blessing that you employ your genius for the common good, Alec. However, I suggest you vacate your workshop. No need. Not now you've given me sacks full of courage. And besides, what with my little devices, I have all the protection I need. Uh, should you find yourselves with a moment to spare, do drop by. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the delay. We will get you into the central station very soon. Where the hell is that schedule? Central station's closed. Attaway's orders. <laughs> Did you not? Were you aware of this door? What a shame. Good partnerships are hard to come by. Ours is most certainly dissolved. It's business, Mr. Fry. One does what one must to come out on top. Crawford will not take the news of my death lightly. He can be... unpleasant when he's cross. I have sacrificed so much. I don't want to lose my buses. Miss Fry, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Clara. I was just going to check on Lambert since the asylum's closing. What brings you here? The children in my care have been falling ill. Our usual tonics aren't working. A cane, too. <laughs> Are you certain you're feeling all right? Of course. I am, miss. Clara! Is there a doctor nearby? Bring her inside.
She simply collapsed? Yes, she said the others took tonic, but it didn't work. I should think not. Ever since Elliotson was murdered, the district has been overrun with counterfeit tonics. <laughs> this one needs proper care. But without the appropriate medication, she and the others will quickly decline. What do you need? I need supplies. Plenty of them. And medicine. Some of the less common ingredients are being stolen and sold at auction. I'd be happy to help. Here's the list. Miss Fry. Evie Fry. I'm Miss Nightingale. How do you do? Please hurry. We don't have much time. You're back. And not a moment too soon. I hope you brought the medication I requested. How is she? She will recover. Pablon Ali, the children. Thanks to you, we can distribute authentic medicine now. But is that a permanent solution? I will petition to have regulations put in place. Lambeth is in your debt. It takes a long time to change things. But I'm not going anywhere, Miss. I'd like to thank our esteemed guests. So the hints you found in the Kenway House lead to the monument. What a wonderful use of your time. Follow me around asking obvious questions. Well, since Henry isn't here, I thought you might enjoy the company. I don't require any company. And Mr. Green is following up on some leads of his own. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. That's a fascinating idea. Oh, please, Mr. Green, come and take a look at this book and stand oh so close to me, Mr. Green. I do not. Well, perhaps you have nothing better to do, but I'm busy protecting the assassins. Are you really? What was it Father used to say? Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. Precisely. Anyway, I'm off. If I find any more wild geese for you to chase, I'll be in touch. Be ever more pleasant for your absence. This looks familiar. Day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You would try to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control it? And why do you want the shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. How like an assassin. To hold the power of eternal life and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life. Is that what you think the shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. <laughs> 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 Take one. Here you go, sir. I say we stop this goodwill towards strangers nonsense and focus on what London really needs. Solid leadership whose hard work will raise everyone up to success. As go the titans of business, so goes the world. Oh, oi! You weak fool. Get a job! Best guards money can buy. Won't do Mr. Dredge any good. Jacob, it's me, Sergeant Frederick Appeline. Freddy. Sergeant. Undercover. There's to be a robbery at the Bank of England, I'm sure of it. Robbery? It's a fortress. Mm, the boys at the station thought I was joking. Wouldn't be so funny if it was their life savings. Who's behind it? That's confidential. 
Oh, come on, Freddy. I can help you. Imagine the headlines. Thieves caught in the act. Abilene Wright all along. Well, I suppose I can fill you in a little. Every fiscal quarter, a branch of the bank is robbed. Never the same branch. The thieves are supplied by... Cockham merchants. Thanks for the info, Freddy. It's Sergeant! I, 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 I'm keeping my eye on you. If only I knew which shipment it was. Then I could trace the weapons to their owner. Capital idea, Freddy. The weapons are here. Same routine as before. If the twopenny opens a vault, we robs it and leaves the money in his storehouse. Look sharp, the boys are waiting. To the Bank of England. Yeah. Well, what say you? You're not gonna like it. Now, see you here. I am graced with the Abilene family's robust constitution. Two pennies rob in the Bank of England. <laughs> the governor of the bank. I think I might need to sit down. There's no time for that. Bastard's probably deep in the vault by now. However you get in, I don't want to know. Of course. But do you know how I can get in? The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress, guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. And, oh yes, one man keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to seal it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupini well. He is in on this, I'm certain. Mr. Fry, please use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupini is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him, no big displays. This is the Bank of England. If you encounter any trouble, I'll be in the atrium in disguise. Tupini won't be leaving that vault. You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squander their savings. We are the experts in investment. Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as their work. It is their city, not yours. Without our investments, there would be no city. for the path of the dead. Murder! Murder! Thank goodness the police were saved! Arrest them all oh. for robbing the people oh. of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice. Not build a single bus for you criminals. Oh, you'll do as we say, Bailey. Or we're gonna have to pay you and your family a visit. You leave them be. Hey! After him! I sent Ross men a message. You and your family are safe. Oh, you are blooming brilliant. The founding members of the London General Omnibus Company. Good moral men. All of them. We'll have buses rolling before you know it. Thank you, Miss Fry. My pleasure.
The shroud is in a chest that matches the key. Find it and bring it to me. Oh! Escort it to the keys. Oh, who comes there? The keys. Whose keys? Queen Victoria's keys. Hers, Queen Victoria's keys. And all's well. You're not with the Royal Guard. How many of you are there? Tell me. Let me go. This is treason. Just you wait until I get out. There'll be hell to pay. As you wish. I shall find it without your help. And then I'll strangle you with it. Watch her closely. <laughs> so, you have murdered me after all. But what good will that do you? The Shroud isn't here. You sought a tool of healing in order to extend your own power. Not mine. Ours. You are so short-sighted. You'd hoard power and never use it, when we would better the condition of humanity. I hope you never find the Shroud. You have no idea what it truly can do. <laughs> Tell me then. <laughs> no. <laughs> Take this down. Then I want it sealed until you receive further orders. Miss Thorne. You supplied me with the means to secure London's future. The city thanks you. The Order thanks you. I thank you. But the Shroud can only be worn by one. Therefore, I hereby dissolve this partnership. I promise to endow you with an income into your old age. That is the most I can do. May the Father of Understanding guide you. Yes, what is it? Miss Thorne, sir. What of her? I'm sorry, sir. She is dead. And the key? Where is the key? There was no key found on her body, sir. will be mine, even if I have to raise hellfire to do it. Burn the letter. All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. B, I presume. Pleasure to meet you. B. B! My name's Herbert! And why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just the job, sir! Some old bloke paid me to... Smug bastard. Bloody hell! Where did you come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. 
and a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Perfect. So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. <gasps> What's the meaning of this? Who the devil are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. If you excuse me a moment. See here! What's all this? Not so fast, Your Excellency. about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough-and-ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry. Madam. Mr. Fry. Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. <laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? Remarkable. Nice doggy. Good boy, Desmond. Hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. told your father how you felt about him. How was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, 
Let's not do something we'll regret. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> Oh, yes. Mm. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. Password. Balaclava. Come in. Now then, let's discuss this like je Good God! Who the bloody hell- Oh, shut up. should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. They say my money is counterfeit! I'm an honest woman! What has happened? What with you? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder, and if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, it would certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. Well, the London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. Please tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lucy Thorne's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847? The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. 
A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie? Certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will meet back on the train. Be careful. Get Miss Nightingale to look at that. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. I'm here to see Mr. Roth. Weapons? No, thank you. I've got my own. You should be on the stage, sir. This way. Ah! Our honored guest has arrived. Come, sit. I've had my eye on you for some time. I find your heroics in battle in the great Crawford Sterrick. Quite magnificent. I've been picking off your soldiers one by one. Doesn't that make you angry? On the contrary. Surprise is a spice of life. Now, Mr. Sterrick, that's a different story. I'm drowning in directives, all terribly pouring. Let's say we work together and bring him down. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. My friend, if I fail to provide you with the chance to cause Starrick some pain, well, you can charge into this theater and kill me yourself. What do you get out of all this? The chance to have a little fun with the bravest man in London. <sighs> you have a deal. <laughs> Lewis, my carriage. Shall we? Would you be so kind as to get him some steam? Apologies, I must run. Do come see me again. Jake. He is beautiful, isn't he? <laughs> I planned a perfect second outing for us. Have you? There's borrowing to be done. Three of Starrick's henchmen are about to disappear. Oh, you sly devil. Oh, and I'm coming along this time. There is no sense in giving you all the glory. Off to my carriage we go, Lewis! Excellent work. Do come find me at the Elabra. 
I have more amusements planned for us. This way, my dear. I've something to show you. All rigged up. Perfect. Let's put our plan into action. Stand back. Ready? Wait! Whatever for? There are children in there. Jacob, my dear. Starrick uses child labor to manufacture goods. We must put an end to his production line. But not like this. Why not? I can do whatever I damn well please! Soon, you will understand what it is to be free, as I am. Light them up, boys! No! What the hell are you doing? We're not playing games anymore, Roth! No. Gift, sir, from Mr. Roth. You should be warned, Mr. Fry, that when Roth is angry with one, he generally brings suffering to many. My dearest Jacob, alas, it seems our adventures together have come to a close. Although our time together was brief, it's left a lasting mark. I wish you well in all your future endeavors. Cordially, Maxwell. Post scriptum. I'm putting on a show this evening. All of London will be there. Enclosed, please find your invitation. I'll be serving you this evening, gentlemen. You're still here, love. Last time, I swear, you nearly poisoned us. Scene two, stand by. When expecting venison. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed your evening so far, ladies and gentlemen. I know I have. Now, before our final act, I would like to toast all you brave people who joined us tonight to celebrate life and death. Go on, toast them! Your move, Jacob, my dear! Burn! 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 <laughs> Darling, what a night. The stuff of legends. Why did you do it? All of it. What? Snap a baby crow's neck between my thumb and forefinger. Slice to bits the ones you deem innocent. Keep the world in its divine, manic state. For the same reason, I do anything. Why not? <laughs>
bred disorder. The sea rises to flood the pubs and extinguish the street lamps. Our city will die. Tupinay has failed. Lucy has failed. Brudenell Elliotson. Pearl. All have gone into the night. It is up to me now. The assassins have brought nature's fury into our homes. Men have become monsters. Barreling toward us, teeth out. Our civilization must survive this onslaught. To prevent a return of the Dark Ages, I will start anew. London must be reborn. You're late. Staric is making his move. The piece of Eden is somewhere inside Buckingham Palace. Let him have it. I've seen your handiwork across the city. Perhaps you should trust my judgment. I've been killing Staric's henchmen. What have you been doing? Let's ask Henry, shall we? I have been repairing your mistakes. Too much haste is too little speed. Don't you call father at me. That's Plato. And I am sorry this doesn't involve anything you can destroy. Father was right. He never approved of your methods. Father is dead! Enough! I have just received word from my spies. At the palace ball tonight, Staric plans to steal the piece of Eden and then eliminate all the heads of church and state. Once more, for old time's sake. And then we're finished. Agreed. So what's the plan? Such an unexpected delight to visit you both. What is the news on the street? Mrs. Disraeli, we have discovered that there is something inside Buckingham Palace that could threaten the... <laughs> what my sister's failing to say is that we require entrance into the ball tonight. Impossible! Even if there were any invitation cards remaining, which there are not, uh, someone of your lowly station... If that damn fool Gladstone is attending this evening, they can have my card. Perfect. Then I'll go alone. Mrs. Disraeli, if you would be kind enough to inform my darling brother of the location of the Gladstone's residence, perhaps he could use his considerable skills to commandeer their cards. <laughs> what fun! Did you hear that, Dizzy? We're going to pinch the Gladstone's invitations. Thank you for volunteering me, sweet sister. Oh, a pleasure, brother, dearest. Now, Mrs. Disraeli, if you would excuse me, I must visit with the Maharaja. It occurs to me that he may have a second set of plans to a certain vault. Quite a carriage you got there. Where did you buy it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Ask all you want, Freddy. You'll never get an answer. Damn it all. Was it my eyebrows? Yes. And your face, voice, and body. Look, I've got an invitation to the Queen's Ball tonight. How did you come by that? Freddy, there's to be an attack on the ball. I need to smuggle some weapons inside to prevent it. Supposing I believe you, only the Royal Guard carries weapons. So? Too easy. For God's sake, Freddy. Fine. I require a guard's uniform. Done. I knew you'd come through. Just promise me, Jacob, that you will return Mr. Gladstone's coach? Of course.
one uniform as requested. It's still warm. My gift to you? I will meet you on the roof of Buckingham Palace. You're such a romantic. Delighted to see you again, Miss Fry. Your Highness, the plans detailing the renovations to Buckingham Palace have gone astray. I suppose you will have to make do with the copies. There are copies? Where? Uh, not so fast. First, I have a matter of some urgency. Carrying out my plan would require stealth and speed, qualities I know you possess. Time is of the essence, Your Highness. Then make this quick, my dear. The most influential men in Parliament remain beyond my reach. But these very men have sent for carriages to prepare for the ball tonight. Acquire an official carriage, and we shall drive the politicians to their destinations. Along the way, I will meet with them. And afterward, I shall tell you where to find the plans. You're a shrewd negotiator. One must be when one is so often underestimated. Thank you, Miss Fry, for forwarding my cause. Oh, you are welcome. I hope some good comes of it, despite Mr. Gladstone's vitriol. Those of us with the largest hearts protect them the most. Your father, for instance. From what I understand, he was extraordinarily sad. Broken, even, after your mother's passing. That kind of pain can blind us, cause us to say outlandish things to protect the ones we love. It's time you returned this carriage and recovered those plans. They are located in Buckingham Palace. The Queen keeps them among her personal papers in the white drawing room. I wish you a good evening, Miss Evie Fry. And to you, Your Highness. Of course he'd arrive in that. Miss Fry? Hand him your weapons. We must enter an armed. Go on in, sir and madam. Dear madam, I am soon to become the prime minister. What in the blazes is our carriage doing here? Did I hear something? No, just the voices in your own head. And yet, they are so much more pleasant than yours. Charming. Aren't I? Wait. The plans are located in the white drawing room which is most likely locked. The captain of the guard will have a key. There you are! <laughs> I have someone I'm simply dying for you to meet. Uh, come with me! Your Majesty, may I present Miss uh, Evie Fry? You are the one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. I really must be going. Miss Fry, may I have this dance? Mr. Starrick, you've had your fun, but the game is over. Uh -uh. Listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time is a wonderful thing, Miss Fry. It heals all wounds. We may make mistakes while dancing. But the mazurka ends, and then we begin again.
problem is, everyone forgets. They trip on the same mistakes over and over. People can learn. Can they? Isn't everyone around you repeating the same steps? But if one man could remember the dance, could know the time, then he could change things for the better. I have had enough. This dance is nearly over. Soon, the people will forget the generation on this terrace. The ruin you nearly wrought on London. When the music ceases, Miss Fry, your time is up. And mine begins. to the waltz is one must lead with one's right foot. Oh, my! Everything all right, my dear? Do you require assistance? I never liked balls. <laughs> Here, the location of the vault, go! Just like that? No plan? No time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption. What? What are you doing? Exploiting. I warn you, my boy. But you do not listen. Requies cart and pache. Mr. Sarek! You forgot to escort me home! Let me rectify my mistake! London will perish without me. You flatter yourself. I would have created a paradise. The city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order. You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were. Shame we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? 
Are you gonna wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. A fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. <laughs> I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry. It's a big world out there. With London in the center. Perhaps not the very center. I came as soon as I could. Do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? Henry, you saved it. I think you belong in the field. With me. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Abilene, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Did I never mention? Mr. Abilene informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is, Your Majesty. Evie Fry, step forward. And you? My brother, ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Green. Mr. Fry? Mr. Green? Neil? Invest you all in the Order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abilene implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abilene tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. We shall meet again. And Miss Fry. Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. <laughs> Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go. Let's get the Shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Leave them Contact! Cover me! That's 
skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want them him to bleed. But dreams that are poison us, them that told us lies of their bravery, them that preached off progress and put us in the poor house. Them done the horrid murder on bloody stages, them that loudly crowed their humility, lords and dames outside the chapels on a summer All quiet now, their mouths are stopped up. Hold still, goddammit! They lie flung in rats and make no sound. Only the mission matters! Understood! Those who fought for Sean! better Those who fought by how they live Loved ones taken long before their work was done Galena, we need an exit! We need to go! Now! Understood. Shroud! Forget the bloody shroud! Stay with me, Bex. Please! We go. Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the Shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the Shroud gonna help you create a new clone? He's not... When the shroud is wrapped around the body, it scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're not making a clone. You're gonna recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs> Hello? It's me? Brought the shroud as you asked, but... I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all.